All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a super box stock go-kart engine. Here's what you'll need. You'll need a Honda GX200 clone motor. You can get these at Harbor Freight and Tools or on eBay through Teddy Wholesale. They buy all the return items from Harbor Freight that are used and not working for as low as $10. This is perfect because you'll mostly use the engine for parts. You'll need some basic tools, including a 12-point socket for the connecting rod and an impact gun to get the flywheel out. Now, as far as engine tools go, they are optional, but they will help you calibrate your engine. Now, the first thing you want to do is remove the governor arm assembly. This is the, as you can see, this is the governor arm up here, and you have the low oil sensor right here. So your job is to remove both of these because you do not need them. So to remove this, you take a 8mm socket wrench and you unscrew the screws here and then you just take this, this thing comes right out. This is your low oil sensor, you don't need it. Removing the governor arm assembly, which sits up here, is a little more work. You will need a hammer and one of these things. Now what you want to do, you want to turn your engine block around, you want to take the hammer and you want to hit this point right here until this bolt comes out. You also want to remove the entire throttle linkage system that sits on top of your engine. You will want to keep these parts because you need them later. Removing the throttle linkage leaves an open hole in your crankcase, right here. You want to plug this hole with a self-tapering screw, like this one. And simply just screw it in there and it'll stay. Use a 1 4th by 1 8th hose barb and an 11 30 seconds drill bit to drill a hole in the crankcase and install a pulse fitting. Next, drill out this hole right here with a 1 4th drill bit to increase the oil flow to the valves. As you can see, after the hole has been drilled, it is a lot bigger. And more oil can flow to the valves. This is a bore dial gauge. It's not essential, but it's a good thing to have. This gauge measures the bore of the engine. The bore is the diameter of the cylinder. On this engine, it should be 67 millimeters. If it's too small, it may wear down the cylinder Now this is an engine home. It's basically, it's like sanding your cylinder wall to create a tight seal between the piston and the cylinder wall. With the hone, you will create a crisscross pattern by running the hone one way and then the other direction. Be sure the hone is oiled and spinning before it enters the cylinder. Now there's gonna be more information about this on their website that I listed in the beginning. After you're done honing the cylinder, you want to make sure you clean the cylinder wall with an oily rag really well to get rid of all the small debris. Next, you want to check the bearings to make sure they spin well. So use your finger to rotate the bearings and check for any bumps. If there are bumps, you can clean them out with compressed air if necessary. Make sure it gets plenty of oil.
Here's the crankshaft. Oil it in all the places that will be spinning and install it in the engine. Next, assemble the piston and connecting rod. When installing the piston rings, make sure the numbers on the ring face up. The order of the rings goes chrome, black, then the oil rings. Make sure the ring gap is positioned at a 12, 6, 3, 6, 9 o'clock, starting with the top chrome ring. Be sure to install the piston with the dot facing down. Now, you can either use a popsicle stick or a ring compressor to squeeze the rings into the cylinder. Make sure the crankshaft is positioned to take the end of the connecting rod and then tap it in. It's very important to torque the connecting rod bolts to 170 inch pounds or 12.9 foot pounds. Now the rod, the connecting rod, comes with instructions on how to properly torque the bolts. After torquing the connecting rod, apply some oil to the camshaft and install the lifters. Putting a drop on the lifters helps keep them in when installing the cam. Place the lifters in, like so. Make sure the dots on the camshaft and the crankshaft are properly aligned. Be sure to check the clearance between the crankcase and the cam lobes. The clearance should be at least two thousandths of an inch. Next, install the gasket and studs. Then, place the cover on. Be sure to oil the bolts and thread them in by hand before torquing them to 17 foot-pounds in a crisscross pattern. Thanks for watching.